Thank you, Swatha. I don't have any time, but I can see them. Okay, she she knew she wait she forgot to call you, so she said if she has time, we would love to spend. Okay, well then tell them that. I guess she, there are I appointments at two. I guess there are appointments at two o'clock. I know, but just the number you giving May or her daughter. It's May. She texts her. I'll say hi. This is Sarah. Unfortunately, I have an exam tomorrow, so I'll be spending my day in the library. Otherwise, I would love to show you around. If you're getting lunch or dinner on campus, I'd suggest going to these places. They're so good, and I go to them all the time. There's also a cute store on Main Street. Blah blah. blah. There's some really cute things in Delaware merch. That's a lot cheaper than the stuff at the bookstore. Okay, perfect. Man, she should have told you last week, not today. Yeah. All right, I'm going to be
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Just letting everybody in. My gosh, we have some screens on you. It's nice to see people that I talk to. Welcome, everybody. If you're coming in, there's a link, a bit uh, bit.ly link or a QR link to um, lots of handouts for today. Um, so you can get that. It's from a training I did a little while ago. Um, so you can grab your stuff now while I let all these people in. Hope the keynote speaker was good. I had another meeting this morning, so hopefully they taped it so I can hear it another time. I'm sorry, where are the notes? I apologize. Oh, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, so you can either use your phone for the QR code. Oh, okay, the scan. Okay, and is attendance going to be on there as well? Um, hmm. I have to go back to my notes and find out how attendances work. I forgot. You're my first session. I have to practice on you. I'll okay. Be good at, I'll be good at the second session. No problem. Thank <laughs> you. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess there is attendance, but let me go back to my notes and find out. Hi, Jean. I'm so happy to be with you. Letting people in. I should have had fun music on or something. I thought everyone was going to come in at the same time. Okay. All right. I am going to continue to let people in, uh, but it is 9.32, so we're going to get started. Um, so welcome to co-teaching and co-planning. Um, so in the chat, if you can just uh, put your name, not your, you know, I know your name, but where school you're from and your position. That way I can see who my audience is. Okay, our cola, clapper mill. Fields Red is right down the street from where I am at the moment. Green Castle, I support Green Castle for a long time. Maryvale, I'm actually at Carl Sandburg all the time. I so think, I'm honestly, there. Barbara, I think I saw you. I think you came to Green Castle several times because I remember going, man, she looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you looked familiar too. And yeah. I'm like, but which school? I support so many schools. I have to like put you in perspective. Right. Right. So I spent a lot of years at Green Castle. Yeah. So hi. <laughs> this year, my co my uh, colleague Asha is there most of the time. Okay. Thank you. Yay, Jean. Jean and I have spent a lot of time together. She's in the uh, academy doing virtual world right now. Okay. Oh, there's one person in the waiting room. I would. Okay. Admit. Okay. So while you're waiting, make sure that you download the handouts. Everything you need is there. Okay. I think we might have hit the end of letting people in. We'll see. Okay. What? Oh, okay. I don't want to get out of that. Um, I messed up. Slideshow. Okay. If you're having trouble with those handouts, here is the presentation for today. Putting it in the chat. Oh, what happened to it? I need a technology co-partner. 
Um, I'm going to let me copy that. Okay. All right. Would you like one of us to let people in and be your co-host? Oh my gosh, that would help because it's hard to do both at the same time. I'm used to having a co-presenter. Okay. Um, I'm going to make Jean my co-presenter, co-host. You are brilliant, whoever just said that. <laughs> so, Okay, so this is um, co-teaching, starts with co-planning. And really, I uh, came up with this because a lot of my schools were starting to want to do more co-teaching. And um, somehow during the pandemic, we got a little away from it because we were so isolated, but now we're trying to get back to it. So what are some strategies for co-planning and co-teaching? So just a little bit about me. I'm a learning and achievement specialist um, in the um, Office of School Support and Wellbeing. Our title changes every year, so I have to remember what it is. And um, I have been coaching and serving schools um, for about 10 years, but I spent about 18 years in the classroom, at, uh, mostly at Georgian Forest Elementary um, in a the Title I school, being the resource teacher. And then I um, jumped over to the Gaithersburg community um, and did a bunch of schools there. And then I went to Central Office. So my background is special education. Um, but I've done a lot of work and research around co-teaching and co-planning um, and a lot about strategy and instruction. So right now, I serve the five special schools, Blake, Stonegate, and Cloverly. Uh, but in the past, I had the whole NEC for a few years So, and Stephen Knowles. So I'm excited to be with you today. Um, this is a little, I tend to be a casual presenter. So pop in, make this a discussion, pretend we're in my living room, just talking about co-planning, co-teaching. Okay. Um, so, um, we already did that. So we're going to play a little game. Um, I hope a lot of you Wordle. I'm obsessed with Wordle. So I hope you Wordle, but if you don't, I'm going to teach you how to Wordle and we're going to play a Wordle game. And this is also a strategy you can take back to your students or in your team meetings. But when you Wordle, I have come up with a word for you and it's linked to that Wordle right there. That and um, it's a it's a word that has to do with what we're talking about today. So the idea is to guess the word. And here's how it works. If you have never played before, you're going to have a blank screen, and then you're going to guess a word. So let's say I oh, my first words always arise because there's three vowels and an S, and I figure I can get a lot of letters in there. So my E is in the right place, but my S is in the word, but in the wrong place. And then you can see that I guessed until I got the word, okay? So if you've never played, this is a fun time to learn Wordle, okay? I'm gonna um, stop sharing a second and put the, the Wordle link into the chat. Oh, where's my chat? Uh, give me one second, it's at the top. Whenever I present, I always put my links in before everyone comes in. That way you don't have to go searching in your... Uh, but it won't let me copy it, I don't understand. Actually, uh, Barbara, somebody else already put the link in. Let's make sure it's the right the link, because I, I wordle a lot. So let's, okay, so it's right the here. right link. Um, so I have done this with Maryland, where you can guess that the word was terps. I just did it recently. There, I, I did it. Okay, there is the link to your Wordle in the chat. So once you figure out the word in the chat, put how many times it took you to do my secret word. Two, Vanessa, you're like an expert. I love Wordle too. I do it every day. I'm obsessed. Okay. 
And this is a website where you can do, um, especially with your fourth and fifth graders, I know teachers that use it. So it's like the vocabulary word of the day, right? So it's like kind of sets the stage for what they're going to be learning. One try, Jenna, you must have, you must have thought about the topic and put it in there. Or maybe that's your go-to word. Okay, Susan, it does say make your own wordle, but you can put letters in. Chris, are you one try two? I need to make it harder for this group. Okay, I just have to tell you, I did this two weeks ago with a bunch of principals and central office people. They had the hardest time finding my word. Like they, some of them never even got it. The teachers are on it. You guys are good. Three tries is good. Okay, so you get the idea. So throughout the throughout today, I'm going to try and also teach you some strategies um, that I use often. Okay. Um, where is my... I'm struggling today for some reason. Okay. So now let's get back to the work of today. So you've already learned a strategy and it's only 9.40, so we're good. Okay, we're gonna watch a video. It's just a very quick two to three minutes on co-planning and co-teaching and it sort of sets the stage for the work. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little instruction on co-teaching and then you're going to talk in some small groups. But basically, the idea of co-teaching is that it's two individuals that are experts in their field coming together to plan for the students. They're both actively engaged. And this Dr. Deeker, who I quoted here, has done a lot of work around co-teaching and co-planning. She's out of Central Florida. She has a book called The Co-Teaching Dance. Um, and it's it's a it's a very easy to follow book, but she gives some really good strategies. So there's a lot of benefits for the students for co-teaching. First of all, if the students are in the gen ed classroom all day, they have more access to general education and they're able to then get differentiated instruction with their peer groups um, in their classrooms. It also is a lot of research around the increase in interactions and the increased vocabulary students have when they're in co-teaching situations as opposed to being pulled out into separate situations. There's also benefits for teachers. Um, this uh, researcher has done a lot of research on the benefits around co-teachers working together. And all of his research show that teachers feel more creative, they feel more energized, they learn um, relational trust, and they feel more satisfied with their job when uh, for teachers that co-teach as compared to teachers that are singleton in the classroom. 
but there's a lot of what the research says there's some things that have to be in place if you want to be successful and that's really about routine it's about planning time and the planning time needs to be in the schedule it needs to be um honored right we can't be pulled to do different things during that time and it needs to have some sort of structure it can't be um the the scruggs has done a lot of research on co-planning where there was no agenda and no structure to it compared to ones there was and there was much more productivity when they had a routine when they had roles and responsibilities in that co-planning time and when they knew what they were going to be trying to accomplish and so the research says that the, if you have a planning period 20 percent of it should be about what what has happened in the past what happened if you meet once a week what happened last week what worked? What didn't work? What can we do to help the students? Who got it? Who didn't? How are we going to solve that? And then 60% of it should be on planning for the upcoming instruction, emphasizing that connection between concepts and life experiences, looking at who, uh, what you each bring to that topic that you're going to be teaching or that unit that's going to be coming up. And so 60% of your time should be planning for the next time. And then as you can guess, 20% should be like, who's doing what and how are we gonna be organized? And what's my role, what's your role and how are we gonna to come together in this work? And so that 20, 60, 20 is sort of a clear way of planning, whether it's 30 minutes a week or 60 minutes a week or 120 minutes a week, you should be dividing it by 60, 20, 60, 20, 60, 20. And so, when you talk about what they each bring to the table, gen ed teachers in general, the research says they bring the curriculum, they know the content, they understand the pacing of the instruction, they have the teaching strategies to go with that concept, they have built a classroom culture, right? Because co teachers rarely spend all day together, even though that would be the ideal world. They generally a special educator might come in and out or an ESL teacher might come in and out. And so that teacher has built a culture in that build, in that classroom. And they're about building relationships. They know the students, they know the relationships, they know how to engage them. And the learning specialist um, is an expert on the student accommodations, on the modifications they need, uh, the academic language that might be a challenge for those students and have strategies for working with that. They're the experts on differentiation and individualization. So they're each bringing something to that co-planning that they can then move forward and work together with. Okay. Um, so I have developed a co-teaching learning template along with my ESOL team. Um, so I, I brought some special educators and some ESOL central office together. Um, and then we um, worked with some school-based teachers to review it and give us feedback on it. So this is like a co-teaching format. It's um, meant to be revised on your own need. Um, it's pretty detailed, but it's supposed to be the um, ultimate of what you should be doing. And then you have to sort of modify it for your needs. Um, so I wanna make sure that in the slides that you have, you can click on it. When I click on it, I get this. So it is a guide that I have filled out as a sample. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put it in the chat just in case you can't get to it. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms for you to sort of review it um, with the experts around you. And just talk about what would work for you, what wouldn't work. What about the 20, 60, 20? How, how would that apply to your school building? How would that go for you? Okay. So you're going to have about 10 minutes or so um, in your breakout rooms to discuss. And I will pop from room to room just to hear the discussion and all the great things that you're talking about. And also, it's a good time to network, get to know each other. What school are you at? How does it work in your school? So it's a nice time for people to get to know each other. So there should be about five people in each group. Um, I'm going to create the groups. 
Okay, before we go into breakout rooms, any questions? Everyone able to get on? Quiet group. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll see you in your small groups and answer any questions that you have and get to know each other, have fun with each other. I'm gonna open the rooms. Okay, welcome back. Oh, everybody's back at room seven. They don't want to leave. They must be having some really good discussion going on in there. Okay, give it a second for everyone to return. I hope you got a chance to meet new people and learn about different schools and how things work in different places. Okay. It's going to close them out in three seconds and we'll all be back. Okay. All right. So welcome back. Um, it was great to hear your discussions and to be in on some of your groups. Uh, I see a, a common theme was how do I get gen ed teachers on board um, and also about the scheduling. And so um, some advice that I would give is that you don't <laughs> start full school the whole time. You can start with one grade level and work with them and work out the kinks with them and figure out how it works. And then uh, they will be your promoters. Yeah, baby. Right? Oh, everything's falling apart. You have to build. Okay, thank you. Um, and so um, they, they will be your promoters. They will be the ones that spread the word that it's working and that their students are achieving. Sometimes behavior is better, structures are better, their workload is better because you're doing some of the planning. And so uh, they will be your advocates and they will come on. 
Um, and then I would say that elementary school starts master planning in you know, February, March for next year. So this might be good strategies, especially the co-planning template to share with your admin and talk about how it might work for your school and how you might master schedule for some co-planning time so you can be effective in the classrooms that you go into. Um, it's because we want to be co-teachers, we don't want to be in the back of the room. We want to be working side by side with our gen ed, um, co our gen ed colleagues. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just show you a, a little bit um, of a playlist that I put together. And then you have two evaluations to do since you're the second session. You have one just for this session. And then you have an overall um, ed camp. And um, I will say that this is the first year they've done elementary. Yeah. So their feedback that you give yeah. is really oh, going to help them plan for next yeah. year. Okay. So that's going to help them plan for next year. So we will take, they want any feedback you can give them, right? What worked, what didn't work, what topics would you have liked to have seen, like anything that you can give them, they will take. Okay. Let's go back to my slideshow. Okay. Do, do, do. Where were we? Um, we already went to small groups. Okay. So here's a playlist that I have made. And this is for you. Are you guys seeing this? Because I don't see uh -oh, what happened to you. Okay, wait a minute. Are you guys seeing the screen? Yeah, we see slide oh, 17. Good, because I lost you for some reason, but now you're back. Oh, you just popped back on my screen. Okay, you never know. All right, so this is a playlist that I made as I was preparing for this uh, presentation um, that I've done a couple of times now, but I put together this playlist. And so this is something you can take if your staff development teacher wants to start doing some co-planning or you want to start helping others to figure out what co-planning is. And I did it by learning style. So there's a podcast that's fairly short, but it's if somebody's an auditory learner or they want to listen to it while they're on their walk or on their treadmill or going from school to home, uh, they can listen there. There's a bunch of videos. Um, in, in the left corner that is about co-teaching and co-planning, you can see that none of them are long. Um, I did that on purpose. Our teachers don't have time, you know, you don't have time for big long videos, but those are kind of short to the suite and they really get to the point. There's also a lot of articles that are written for teachers uh, to be able to look at co-teaching and co-planning and to be able to prepare for that. And then for those researchers in your school who need the big evidence to be convinced that co-planning and co-teaching is the right thing to do, you can see that the big data is an article. It, it, that is an article, a research article with validity and reliability and who the participants were and the outcomes and recommendations. So if you've got that researcher on your staff that wants to look at research or you're that person, that's for you. So this, this and the co-planning template is in the middle. So this you can take, you can run with it, you can use it in any way you want. Um, you can revise, you can look at them and revise it based on your staff needs. So hopefully that is something that you're gonna be able to use in the future. So the idea is that we are better together, we are stronger together and students achieve better. I put my Twitter on the bottom, follow me on Twitter. I know it's my maiden name, not my married name. I did my Twitter a long time ago. Um, so put that on there. I put a lot of articles that follow me. And last but not least, if you are a Terp, you need to let me know. I'm the president of the College of Education Alumni Network. Um, we have an email, edterpsalumni at gmail. If you email me, and tell me what school you're in, you might just get some Maryland swag in the pony in the next week. So email me if you are a College of Ed alumni. I want to hear from you. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll put that email in the chat just in case, um, cause I need to stop sharing to get you the evaluation. So Ed Terps alumni gmail.com or you can email me in my mcps if you want but 
There it is. I want to hear from you. Terp swag coming your way. Okay. Evaluation. I have to find it. No, that's not it. Okay. So this survey link is also your participation. So it's pretty important you fill it up. And I'm going to put the link in the chat. I will stay on if you have any questions, I might discuss anything, but there's your evaluation. So you have two to do right now. You have your co-teaching one and you have like the big picture of EdCamp. And I know they cannot wait to get your results. Oh, Colleen already emailed me, she's a terp. Hello, Colleen. Let's go, Colleen. Laytonsville. Okay, I'm going to send you some Terps. Now. All right, go Terps. Okay, once you do your evaluation, you are free to enjoy whatever comes next in your day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 